Hi, I'm Andy, and today I'm gonna to give you a quick overview on how you can turn garbage plastic into cool, useful boxes. All kinds of boxes, boxes and boxes. You can store old plastic in the boxes. You can stack the boxes. You can make beautiful rainbow display boxes. And it's pretty simple. By the way, this is Digital Naturalism Laboratories here in Gamboa, Panama. Um, this is the rainforest behind me. You may notice some uh, little rodents uh, that are related to porcupines called ñeques or uh, agoutis passing by uh, while I'm talking. I might not notice them, but they're very cute. So the basics are you get your plastic, you shred it up into some kind of fine bits of stuff. You melt those bits into sheets just using like an electric griddle, um, use a panini press, and then you can do things with these sheets of plastic. Uh, you can use a CNC mill if you have one. I'm using a laser cutter uh, to actually cut through. This video and there's a whole how-to article to give tips on exactly how we did this and how you can make whatever kind of box or design or any kind of thing that you would make out of any plastic sheet that you might buy completely fresh, you could also try to make it out of old trash plastic and save some garbage from the landfill. Let's get into it. Your very first step is to source some amount of plastic. This is used 3D prints that didn't quite work out. This is a war turtle, I think. Um, these are bits of old Clorox bottles. So old garbage plastic. All this plastic that you see right now, this is actually all PLA, which is a type of 3D printing plastic. Uh, I think it stands for polylactic acid. You probably won't find that common in many things that you might buy um, from like a grocery store or whatever. Um, but there's lots of 3D printing companies who will print stuff for you. And many times those prints don't work out. So, you know, the printer stops halfway through, the power goes out, uh, maybe it was just a not great design. And so there's lots of leftover 3D prints in the world. Also, sometimes the 3D printing filament gets bad. It gets too old, it becomes brittle, it's been exposed to too much sunlight and it kind of breaks down a little bit. So it's not as flexible. So it can't really be used that well in the 3D printer, but you can remelt it and give it brand new life as all kinds of cool, funky colored stuff. So your very first task is source some plastic. The easiest thing for us was just to write some messages to some local 3D printing companies and be like, hey, I bet you got a bunch of plastic. And it turns out they did. Other types of plastic that you can use to remelt safely in this way include plastic number two, uh, which is HDPE, plastic number four, which is LDPE, plastic number five, uh, which is polypropylene, and then some 3D printing types of old filaments. We try not to use ABS, because uh, you can't really laser cut it. It supposedly gives off very toxic fumes, so you want to steer clear of ABS, the other more common type of 3D printing filament that there is. But PLA works great, it smells kind of sweet when you burn it. Most of these, when you're just melting them, don't even make that much of a smell. As for the different types of plastic, those, that's a numbering system that I think uh, DuPont or some chemical company came up with to try to normalize acting like, oh no, it's cool, we're making all this terrible plastic uh, in the world. Because you can, you can sort it and recycle it, but 90% of stuff you bring to a recycling center just gets tossed in the garbage anyway, because as you will find out from recycling your own garbage, there's many reasons you might not want to use certain types of plastic. Maybe it's too dirty, maybe it's got a weird label on it. Um, maybe it's a funky shape or maybe it was holding some chemical that you don't want to mess with. Step number two, after you get your plastic, you need to clean it. If it's a bunch of 3D printing plastic, it's probably pretty clean. You don't really need to do that much. 
if it's a bunch of old milk jugs or something like that, like plastic number two HDPE, probably want to clean it up. A, it's gonna smell bad. B, there's gonna be like weird old, you know, chemicals and dirt that'll stop your plastic from really melting to each other really well. And if it's anything that's oily at all, it can also, those oils can stop your plastic from really sticking to each other when it melts. Step three is sort the plastic. You're gonna want to make sure that all your numbered plastics, number two, number four, number five, your PLA or whatever, are completely separate from each other. This is important because not all the plastics will stick to each other when you melt them because they have different melting temperatures and it's gonna be a huge mess and you're not gonna get the, the plastic performance that you deserve if suddenly you're mixing your PLA and your uh, HDPE all together. Your sheets are just gonna fall apart. Sorry, so many bugs. Uh, I gotta put on some bug spray. Okay, so you got your plastic, you've cleaned it, you've sorted it by type. Now, it's really not important, but really fun to sort your plastic by color. If you can do that, then you can make fun, amazing rainbow colored sheets and really get cool, amazing designs and, and fun patterns and you get to really play around with it when you mix those colors. If you don't sort by color, any little bits of like black PLA will just turn your entire batch pretty darkly colored. And you know, it, it can be kind of cool looking, but many times you want something really fun that's gonna pop and be really bright and play with that. So you wanna be able to have control over the color of the artwork that you're creating or the boxes or whatever these fun things are. Uh, for instance, here's just other fun sheets that aren't rainbow colored, but because I sorted them, we can make fun streaks and stripes and weird interesting patterns. It can be kind of tiring. You may be overwhelmed because you have boxes and boxes of zillions of different colors, but try to give yourself a limit number of boxes to sort stuff into. I would suggest seven, uh, a red, an orange, a yellow, a green, a blue, an indigo box, and even a violet box. And then probably also like just like a black and a white color, because um, those are both pretty common. And you may want to enlist your friends into helping you sort this. Uh, my partner Kitty was a total badass at sorting all these and we even had some of our local neighborhood kid friends help us sort and clean a lot of the plastics. Um, they were totally awesome uh, and they really made it a lot more fun. Uh, it can be kind of a, a social event. Throw a plastic party um, yourself if you can. Uh, it's a, a real good tip for making this seem more like fun and less just like you're wading through garbage that has taken over your life. You've gotten your plastic, you've cleaned it, you've sorted it by type, and you've sorted it by color. Now you need to, uh, 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 warning time, warning time. You gotta look out for bogeys. Watch out for bad stuff now. This is a really important part. There's gonna be three main types of bogeys you gotta look out for in terms of your plastic. The first type of bogey is metal bits. Sometimes people make 3D prints and they have like a little nut inside them and then they go, oh no, actually I don't want this anymore. I'm not gonna bother taking the nut out. I'm gonna just toss it with my old broken crappy 3D prints. That's fine for them, but it sucks for you because if you accidentally toss one of those nuts into your blender or your industrial shredder, it hurts the teeth of your uh, blades that are supposed to just crush up plastic. And so then you gotta like go in and resharpen your whole shredder or whatever. It can be bad for when you're later trying to laser cut it. If you have a hunk of metal stuck in there, chances are your laser is not powerful enough to cut through that metal. And then you end up with this chunk that's uncuttable and it breaks your design. And then you sometimes it breaks the whole thing and you have to break it all apart, melt it and try again. So first bogey, metal. Metal is bad. Second bogey is bad plastics. You got all this nice PLA, who's not invited to the party? ABS. ABS pretty much sucks. We ground up some ABS, we tried seeing like, okay, well you can print with it, so we can probably melt it. But even if you melt it, it releases a bunch of really gross smelling fumes. And then if you actually burn it, you combust it. Um, for instance, like if you're laser cutting it, it supposedly releases like cyanide or like hydrogen cyanide gas or some crap. And uh, chances are you don't want cyanide. 
Some people are like super like, oh my god, if you have the slightest bit of ABS that could have possibly been in with your PLA, then you need to throw it all out or your whole house is going to turn into a gas chamber. I don't think it's that bad. We had uh, everyone sort out the ABS and the PLA beforehand, but then we even double checked to make sure, and you get good at this, you can, you can feel the difference between the ABS and the PLA while you're sorting it. Keep the ABS out of your plastic. We don't want to deal with that. The other potential bogey plastic that tends to show up a lot um, is, well, plastic number one, PETG. Mostly it doesn't melt that well, it kind of shrinks up a lot. It's not that great to use for this. It's the clear plastic that you find in most plastic bottles. Um, get rid of that, it's pretty easy to avoid. But the more sneaky one can be plastic number six, polystyrene. It's the plastic that like styrofoam is made out of, um, sometimes little like yogurt containers. It's often a white color and it's often very shiny. Um, and it can be kind of brittle if you kind of squeeze it or break it. Sometimes it tries to blend in as a number five polypropylene, but if you start heating that up, it smells really gross too. If you're into recycling polystyrene, keep it to the side. You can do things like melt it in acetone and then use it as like a weird putty. But again, then you're dealing with all kinds of gross fumes. In terms of what we're doing with the plastic here, number two, number four, number five, and PLA, no gross fumes. It's all pretty good. The smelliest plastic you're going to deal with of those is the PLA and it just smells kind of sweet like a, like a kind of caramelized sugar and part of that reason is because it's made from a, a kind of corn syrup or something you know just like everything in the US. Now you're ready to shred. The easiest way to handle any of this plastic, you can do it at home right now, is just get some scissors, just start slicing up stuff. If your plastic's really thick, I recommend a piece of shears. You can slice it with a big heavy duty shears. And if you slice it into just little bits, you know, maybe something like this, a little bit smaller ideally, that's gonna be fine to melt it with. You might have to melt, refold it over, and then melt it again, but you can get there. If you have a whole bunch of plastic and you wanna get these in little tiny particles that are easier to melt, and you wanna kinda of automate the system a little bit, I'd recommend one of these other techniques. The next technique is you could actually make a plastic smoothie where you take some plastic after you smash it up a little bit, put it into an old blender, put some water or even like rubbing alcohol in there, and then you can start blending it up. If you just put just the plastic in your blender, the blender is going to spin really quickly and it's gonna heat up and then your plastic's gonna melt into a big glob in your blender around those blades and then you're gonna have a blender that's just one big glob of plastic that doesn't move and that's not great. But if you add a liquid, it does two things for your blender. One, it gives it that liquidiness that any blender needs to actually chop up anything. And then two, it will provide a cooling. So it'll stop the plastic from actually heating up too much and starting to melt. Then all you need to do is after your plastic is a bunch of little tiny particles, you could put it onto a tray outside in the sun um, and let it evaporate before you go on to the next melting process. Now, of course, my absolute favorite way to shred the plastic is get an industrial shredding machine. This is Terry La Trituradora, Terry the Shredder. Technically, Terry is a strong granulator device for granulating plastics that uh, comes from a big industrial place in China. You can order them off eBay. It's a pretty standard thing. Just search for strong granulator. But of course, it's gonna be more expensive than chopping up your plastic by hand or shredding it uh, even in just a cheap blender. These industrial shredders are gonna cost you about 1,600, that's how much ours cost, to around $2,400 USD. This is also about the same price that you're gonna probably be paying if you try to build like an open source version of a shredder, such as on Precious Plastics has really great design. Though I would really recommend if you're going to go with an industrial shredder, and you're gonna spend a couple thousand dollars on your shredding machine, don't go for the version one of the Precious Plastics design. It's a little bit smaller and it can be useful for getting into it, 
but it's very slow going. And in some ways, if you're gonna be producing that little amount of plastic, you're almost better just, you know, getting a posse of people together and just slicing it up by hand. Versus if you have a big industrial shredder like this, for around the same amount of money, around $2,000 as well, that's already built for you. And this thing can just shred and shred. We went through 50 pounds and probably under an hour's worth of shredding. Amazing, um, I love Terry. Terry's really great, Terry's a hero. Also put cool eyeballs onto your shredding machine, definite plus. But if you do go with the Precious Plastics design, I would recommend going with their version two that has the dual teeth design, because that one, at least from what I've been reading on online, I haven't used it myself, but it seems to be a lot more functional. The only one I've actually used myself is the these industrial ones that you can find on eBay. Uh, they're just pre-made and they work pretty great. Once you shred all of your plastic, you're gonna end up with what they in the industry call their plastic granules. And they're great. Once you're there, you this is oh, you're an artist, yeah. this is your your palette is loaded up. You can have all these cool colors to choose from, and now your main job is melt it. And this is pretty fun. This is where you're kind of doing the painting. You're you're making the swirls, you're having a fun time, you're you're getting bored and just seeing what kind of colors melt well together. You're gonna need some sheets that are gonna protect the plastic from just sticking to everything and making a huge mess. We use these Teflon baking oven liners, which are pretty great. They transfer the heat really well and nothing really sticks to them. They're what was recommended in a lot of other precious, precious plastics videos, so we went with those. But we've also used silicone baking sheets those are okay, they tend to insulate a little bit more and they actually they, they take a little bit longer to heat up and a little bit longer to cool down. So they're not as ideal and I've noticed that the temperatures we cook at between around 350 Fahrenheit to maybe 450 Fahrenheit, mm. they can actually break down the, the silicone a little bit on some of these just cheap silicone baking mats. And so they started getting gummy and kind of falling apart and sticking to the plastic. Versus the, the Teflon sheets, been working amazing, doing great. You also, if you don't have either one of these right now, but you just gotta get melting, you can use parchment paper which is a paper that's basically impregnated with silicone to make it non-stick. People use them for baking cookies and stuff like that. You can totally use that. You're just gonna have to throw them away after a couple uses. They start getting charred up and brittle and kind of fall apart. So when you get your plastic, if you're using PLA, we've been experimenting a lot with what types of temperatures and settings and cool periods and everything works best. For us, with PLA, We've done about 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I apologize that these degree measurements are in Fahrenheit, but this was the, the Panini press I bought only reports its temperatures in Fahrenheit. I think this is around 200 C, which makes sense for what uh, the rating is for the PLA when you're melting it in your 3D printer. But when you're melting all this, um, you want to kind of, you want to have it basically at the lowest temperature that everything's going to melt thoroughly. So if it's too low, you're going to end up with chunks that didn't quite melt or stick to each other. If it's too high, it can start bubbling, it can start fuming, it can actually start burning the plastic if it's much too high. And then your plastic sheets become kind of brittle and can kind of fall apart uh, because you've basically broken down those bonds. You've actually burned your plastic instead of just melting it. So find the lowest temperature that your plastic melts at. Again, our PLA has been working great for making these sheets. 350 Fahrenheit, 20 minutes. Other types of plastic, number two we've been doing for 30 minutes at around 425 Fahrenheit. Number five we've been doing for probably just around 10 minutes at around 400 Fahrenheit. And number four we've been melting for about 15 minutes at around also 400 Fahrenheit and that seems to work pretty good. So once your plastic is melted, your job is not completely over in making these sheets because you need to make sure they cool well. Um, when, the, when all of these plastics cool down, they will actually start shrinking up. Um, they get colder and they, they shrivel just a hair, but that's enough for if they're just laying out, they'll start curling and they'll curl up. And that's not ideal if you're trying to use these sheets as perfectly flat sheets 
So you want to squish your melted plastic right off the oven as soon as possible. Squish it between two heavy flat things. This will keep it from curling up and warping and you'll end up with a nice firm flat piece of plastic that you can do all kinds of great stuff with. It'll take about the same amount of time that you heat up your plastic in order to let it cool down. So for instance, the PLA, if you took about 15 to 20 minutes to heat it up, give it a good 15 to 20 minutes to cool down. And you also want to make sure that the things that you're melting it between aren't super insulated because when you, when they're cooling down, if they take too long to cool, then these plastic sheets can start getting bubbly and very uh, porous. And especially with the PLA, it means that it's just going to be brittle and just fall apart in your hands when you pick it up. Some things like the, the HDPE, um, it's just going to take a long time uh, to cool down. Anyway, it's not really going to bubble up or anything much at the temperatures we're melting it. So that's not as much of a concern. Now you need to come up with a design to cut. We made a couple of these designs, uh, these stackable boxes, for instance. Um, this display box, uh, this a rainbow display box that we're going to bring uh, different items uh, to give away for free at a pride parade this week. Make any kinds of things that you could try to make with like normal laser cut acrylic, but you can use your upcycled plastic sheets instead. Now the caveat here though, is of course, you're limited by a couple things. One, your plastic sheets might not be the exact super good tolerances as the three millimeter acrylic that you're gonna buy from McMaster Car or whatever. It can be a little funky. So some like this one's, this one gets a little bit thin. Um, and towards the middle, it's a little more regular. It maybe has some bubbles in there. Maybe it's got a hole. When you're dealing with upcycled stuff, the advantage is, yay, this plastic doesn't just get tossed into a landfill. We can make use of it. We can reuse it over and over again. The downside is it's gonna be a little funky. So you gotta, you gotta plan your design with funkiness built in. So if you're making any of these boxes, all these boxes were just made on online box generators. You don't even have to go into some kind of really fancy CAD program. Uh, you can as well if you want, but you don't have to. You can just generate these boxes and send them to a laser cutter. But all these boxes are based on the fact that they have these little, these little finger joints. Now, when you're messing with our funky plastic, you're gonna want to try to make these finger joints, you're gonna to wanna to aim for larger, fatter, thicker finger joints that are also a little bit more forgiving. In a lot of these box generators, you can also change the tightness of the fit between what you're cutting. When you're cutting, if you have a really good laser cutter, um, maybe you have a small kerf is what they call it. That's the kind of uh, uh, gap between the two sides of something that you're cutting with one of these tools. So if you have a really good laser cutter and really good material, you can have a very narrow kerf. When you're melting this plastic, the PLA has a pretty big kerf because it also soaks up a lot of heat. It kind of spreads out. It can be kind of thick. So maybe like a, a 0.15, a 0.2 kerf is something you can aim for. Um, <laughs> but then things like HDPE, they really soak up the heat a lot. Their kerf can get even bigger and they'll also have like kind of a welling of plastic residue along the lines that you're cutting. To reduce uh, how funky your designs get when you're cutting with the laser cutter, uh, an important thing is instead of trying to do one cut at a really high power and really slow speed, do many cuts at a, a faster speed. Um, this stops too much energy from just getting soaked up in one part of your plastic sheet and just starting to melt everything around. And instead it just chips away your design over and over again. All of these parts were cut with 10 passes. Uh, we set the laser cutter to take the outside designs or anything that's being cut through the laser and cut it 10 times instead of one slow, do, 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 I'm cutting it all the way out. It just goes, pew, pew, pew. And each one of these panels took about five to 10 minutes to cut out. So it's not gonna be as quick as maybe some of the rapid prototyping that you're used to when you're working with materials that are more fit for the laser cutters. After you've cut out 
all of your pieces, the last thing really to do to make your cool upcycle boxes is just weld them together. There's a couple ways that you can do this. One of the simplest ways is, hey, you got a hot glue gun? You can hot glue these, these bad boys together. That's no real problem. Set your glue temperature to pretty hot and it'll adhere pretty well. Now, if you wanna go one step more advanced, why use hot glue when we know the PLA melts? What if we just shove that PLA straight into the hot glue gun? Maybe that'll work. It does kinda work. I've heard of people actually 3D printing tubes that fit inside the hot glue gun, and then you can use those pretty well. That'd be a better idea. I was just shoving a big chunk of filament in the back of one of these hot glue guns, and it kinda worked, um, but it got pretty messy, and some of it would come flooding back out. Uh, so it's doable in a spot. I wouldn't totally recommend it just like that, but you could do it. Now, another thing you could do is just take something like this is a butane powered soldering iron, or you could use other kinds of soldering irons as well. They're pretty great. The butane one is nice portable. There's no cord. It heats up really quickly and it even has a hot knife attachment. You can take that and just literally just go along the seams of your boxes and weld them straight up. If you want a little more sturdiness, you can actually feed in a little bit of that 3D printer filament while you are actually heating up and melting that seam. And then you can have a really thick joint that's welded um, in a very strong structural way. So this, this box feels quite sturdy to me, especially compared to when they're just sheets. Sometimes the, PL, the PLA plastic, if it, especially if it's too thin, can feel almost a little brittle. Uh, so make sure it's, it's at least a little thick. My Panini Press has been making plastic sheets that are around three to five millimeters thick. So I set all my designs to use five to six millimeters as a material thickness for when I'm planning out the designs and getting them together. When you're using funky sheets like this, it's better to overestimate how thick your sheets are gonna be rather than underestimate. Cause you could always fill in those gaps again, melt them back over. But if it's too small, if it's too thin, then you're gonna have to grind stuff down, smooth it, which is also doable. We've had to do that with several of the joints here that ended up a little bit too thick, but it's much easier to just plan for that thickness being a little too big and you'll be fine. Probably the hands down best way to connect your boxes together is if you're using PLA, you could also just use a 3D printing pen. You just set this thing to the highest temperature you can get it to so that that plastic's really good and melty and will actually stick and start melting some of the other PLA together. And you can just use that just to weld all the seams together quite strongly. That's the, the most recommended way of doing this. There's other designs. I was gonna try to have them out here. We got like a box with like a cool hinge. I'm gonna edit those in and be like, oh yeah, look, it's been sitting here too the whole time. Um, I also made this fun box that's going to be an incubator for a, a scientific, uh, it's gonna be an open source scientific tool we're developing with uh, one of the residents here at our laboratory. Have fun with the plastic. Let me know if you make cool things. Let me know if you have questions. I've been looking at a lot of other precious plastic videos and been having a blast, but there's always questions that I'll have like, like how long did they actually say to use for polypropylene? Oh, I don't know. Um, or what are those weird sheets that they're using? Feel free to contact me. Yeah, I'm, hang I'm hanging out, I'm busy, but I'm flexible. Uh, so, <laughs> so talk to me. It's fun. Um, Turn yourself into a fun garbage person. You kind of live in this garbage, but you can make it very beautiful. And it can be nice and pretty. So, yay, garbage. <laughs>